The LB historic home in Bartow, you see it right here, was built by a former slave named Lawrence B. Brown. His handiwork stretches up and down central Florida. He became a very prominent member of the Bartow community after being freed and documented every aspect of his life. And as photojournalist Matt Apthorpe shows us, now two men have made it their mission to ensure his legacy is never lost. The house had two water supplies, have to give it water to get water. My name is Clifton Lewis. My name is Chuck Warren. I'm the founding president of the Neighborhood Improvement Corporation of Bartow, Inc. I'm one of the board members of the L.B. Brown House. The historic L.B. Brown House. Here's an important story. When Clifton first realized that this house had some real significant historical value. We're in Bartow, Florida, at the home of the L.B. Brown House. Lawrence Brown was born in 1856 near Gainesville, Florida. He was born into slavery, freed at the age of nine at the end of the Civil War. He remained in the Gainesville area with his parents and worked on a farm until sometime in the mid-1870s when he moved just east of Orlando, a little community known as Deland, Florida. While he was there, he built at least nine rental dwellings in the Deland area. It was around 1885, Brown moved to Polk County, as a lot of other folks had done. When he came to Bartow, it was a time when phosphate had been discovered and the trains had just come in to this area. So a lot of people were flocking to Bartow. It was, a, it was a growing city. This was the back door, for example, to Brown's workshop. He purchased at least two acres of land initially and started building little rental houses. We estimate he built perhaps 40 or 50 houses in East Bartow, called the Paula area. He also had a, a business where he did a lot of different things, such as repairing umbrellas, silvering mirrors, digging wells, selling Bibles, and so forth. He was a sort of an everyman. If there was a need for something, L.B. Bryan tried to provide that need. He had the kind of personality, and he was comfortable around white people. And just don't forget that after the Civil War, many white people did not like the idea of blacks being free. And he was still able to be someone who was involved in the community and worked with and did business with white men as well as black men. So the last chapter is called A Living Legacy. I'm also the author of a book about Lawrence Brown and his life, From Slavery to Community Builder. Those words are on his tombstone. Ledger books that his son Robert gave to us. He wondered if it would be cheaper to go to the butcher shop and get his meat or if it would be cheaper to raise his own. One year, two months, and 22 days is how long he had the pig. His brother Joe owes him $40 and he said, get it from Joe and give it to your mother. Things about home and being a good husband, appreciating your wife. Once you've paid me $45, I will apply that $45 as your down payment and you can become a homeowner. The woman's tongue is a sword and she'll not let it rust. I don't know if he was having a hard time with his wife that day, but he wrote those, those two comments. 26 haircuts for one year for $2.50. I'm a lover of history in general. And when I first saw the house in 1989, 1990, it was abandoned. Our nonprofit that we had just started needed a place to meet, an office space. When Clifton started restoring the house, Lakeland Ledger, the local newspaper, heard of the story and decided it would make a good story. At this time, Robert Brown, Lawrence Brown's youngest child, lived in New York. And Robert Brown saw the story and he thought, well, who are these people that are restoring this house that I lived in? So he flew down to Florida and he met Clifton. During one of his visits to the house, Lawrence and Annie's youngest child, Robert, commented to Clifton Lewis, when my father built this house, stunned, Lewis asked Robert to repeat what he had just said. Oh yes, my dad built this house. That moment was when Clifton knew that this was much more than just an old house. It was built by a former slave. Stumbling upon the story of L.B. Brown was just an inspiration. It sort of caused my spirit to soar. But when you think about it, I mean, just that one that five seconds in history, just those one five seconds, if that hadn't have happened, you and I wouldn't be talking about this house at this point. Nobody would know the history. He was an example of what we should be, how we should be living today. I think that may be his legacy. I think what he should say to young people is that look at what L.B. Brown overcame. Born in slavery, born with nothing, and having no formal education, yet becoming a highly successful entrepreneur. And so that legacy for young people is that if he could do it, 
My God, I can do it too. And that was photojournalist Matt Apthorpe.